Hi students, uh, welcome to today's uh, lecture on data structures. So in our previous sessions, uh, we have discussed about uh, these topics, uh, definition of data structures, classification of data structures, operations on data structures, abstract data types, preliminary sub algorithms, and uh, how to measure time and space complexities, right? And today, uh, we will discuss about this topic the searching problem and how to solve this searching problem with the help of linear search algorithm binary search algorithm and if time permits fibonacci search algorithm so for majorly we focus on these two algorithms uh, in this session and then uh, after designing the algorithms we will calculate the time and space complexities of linear search and binary search okay so what is this searching problem searching problem <clears throat> can be defined like this you will be given a list of elements a list of n elements say and uh, you will also be given one element for searching which is called as key so identifying whether the element key is present in the list or not is called as searching problem okay i repeat again you will be given a list of elements and a key the objective of this searching problem is to check whether that key is present in the given list or not that is called a searching problem right for solving this problem we have many algorithms available linear search binary search and a variation of binary search called as a fibonacci search so let us focus on this uh, linear search algorithm how it finds whether an element is present in the given list or not okay so linear search algorithm uh, probably is the uh, simplest algorithm among all those searching algorithms uh, but not uh, that efficient in terms of time complexity the uh, uh, algorithm focuses on comparing the given key element with every element in the list starting from the first element to the last element until either the element is found or the entire list is completed without finding the element okay so that is the uh, main uh, uh, algorithm or main step used in linear search the uh, i'll show it here in uh, some technical terminology the algorithm looks like this starting from the leftmost element of the array this is the list of elements given a r r is the name of the list and starting from the first element leftmost element is nothing but first element of the array and comparing with one by one let us say x is the element we are searching for with each element of ARR, if X matches with an element, then return the index and stop the process. If X does not match with any elements, then at the end we return minus one. So returning minus one indicates that element is not present in the array. So whatever element we are looking for, that may or may not present in the corresponding list. If it is present, we call it as a successful search. If it is not present, we call it as a unsuccessful search. Okay. So let us understand this algorithm again, the steps in the algorithm. Starting from the leftmost element, moving towards the rightmost element of the array, compare the element X, which is nothing but the key, with every element we, we move on, move on. So if X matches with any element in that process, return the corresponding index where it is found. If X does not match after finishing the entire process, then return minus one. Okay, so don't return minus one at each uh, comparison. Only minus one will be returned only if X is not matched with any of the elements in the array. Okay, so that is what the the algorithm says the more detailed algorithm uh, say this is actually 
a pseudocode, not exactly an algorithm. Uh, it, it's a pseudocode. Let us say this is the name of the algorithm I am putting, linear search. And it takes three parameters. A is the array of elements. A is the array that stores the elements. N is the size of the array. It means if n is 10, that means A contains 10 elements. Key is the value that I am searching for. Okay, so I want to search for this key in this array of this size. Right. So step one says that initialize a variable, let us say name of the variable is POS to minus one because till now we did not find the, the location of the key to indicate that we declare POS as minus one. So POS is the position of key. Okay. So this will be updated if you find this key. Otherwise, position will be kept as minus one to indicate that key is not found. Okay. For that purpose, we use this variable. And then we use a temporary variable i is equal to one, which begins at the first position because this is a pseudocode. I am declaring it as one. But uh, when it comes to programming languages, you can declare it as zero. i is equal to zero because arrays index begins with zero. Okay, so when you are implementing this algorithm, go with set i is equal to zero. That means i is equal to initialize i value as zero. And then after initializing these two values, we repeat the step four until i less than or equal to n, which means this i is repeated until it reaches the end of array. n is the last location of the array. Therefore, i will be repeated until it reaches the end of the array. So what we do in each step that shows step four. We compare this a of i element, that means element at ith position with the corresponding key. So if a of i is equal to key, because this is pseudocode, I am writing is equal to a single is equal to for searching also. Okay. So in C language, you need to write uh, double equal to. Okay. So if a of i is equal to key, then set position is equal to i. Why we are writing this? Because if key is matched, matched with the element at a of i, it means we found this element. Therefore, position is immediately updated to i because key is found at i position. Okay. If this is not satisfied, okay, then we uh, do not perform all these tasks. Okay, so what what are what are the other things we are doing here? If key matches, position is updated to i, and then we are immediately printing a message that element found at pos because pos contains the value i, it will be displayed over here. And then we are saying go to step six. What step six is saying? It is exit. Step six is exit. Right? Then if it is not matched here, if a of i is not equal to key, then this is end of if. So if this is not matching, then it comes over here. What is it? Set i is equal to i plus 1. That means we are updating i value and then again it goes back to the same step because this will be repeated until i becomes greater than n. So i is equal to i plus 1 updated and this condition will be tested. If there are more elements to check again it comes back to step 4. Again it repeats the same process. It checks whether the key element is matching with the element of a of i. If so, it updates the position and prints the message and then goes to exit and so on. This step will be repeated until either the element is found or the entire array is completed. That means i becomes greater than n. Okay. So somehow you will reach the end of loop and you will come to this step 5. So when you reach step five, if position is still minus one, it means the element is not found anywhere in the array. Why initially position is minus one, 
and still position is minus 1 that means position is not updated anywhere if you found the element somewhere in the array position must have been updated okay otherwise position will not be updated if element is not found position will be minus 1 itself so you are checking that if position is still minus 1 then it means the value is not present in the array so we are printing that message okay and uh, this end of if is for this second if okay and then we go to step 6 which is nothing but exit okay now so this algorithm uh, is simply an implementation of the previous uh, uh, general statement saying that starting from the leftmost element of the array moving towards the rightmost element of the array compare each element with the key element and if a match is found then return the index otherwise return minus one the same thing is implemented over here okay so to understand this linear search algorithm in a better way let us have a look at this uh, example uh, this is an array of elements uh, it contains uh, uh, nine elements 10 50 30 70 80 60 20 90 40 these are the elements in the array and i want to find whether 20 is present or not so this is the key I am searching for. Okay. So what will happen according to the algorithm? 20 will be compared with the first element. What is the first element? 10. So we compare 20 with 10. Are they equal? No. Therefore, we update the position. Uh, we update the I value to 1. And again, we compare 20 and 50. They are not same. Therefore, we update the i value to 2. Again, we compare the value at 2 with 20. So 20 and 30 are not same. Therefore, we update it to 3. The value at 3 is 70. Compare it with 20. They are not matched. So move to the next location. 80 versus 20. They are not same. Move to the next location. 60 and 20. They are not same. Move to the next location. 20 and 20 match. So whenever you found a match, you throw that position 6. So the element is found at 6. That will be the message. In case if the element is not there in the array, suppose you are searching for uh, some element uh, 45 in the array. If the search element is 45, then the search process continues. 45 is not matched with any of these elements. Therefore, the search continues. It continues with seventh element, 90 versus 45, 40 versus 45. And because you come to end of this uh, array, it says that element is not found in the array. Okay. So either the search ends by finding the match in the array or the search ends by identifying that element is not present in the array. If element is found in the array, it means it is a successful search. Here, this is an example of successful search. And uh, uh, if the element is not present, then it is an example of unsuccessful search. Okay. Right. Now, uh, we design the algorithm and uh, we understand uh, how the linear search process works. Now, we will try to analyze what is the time requirements of this algorithm. Okay. So whenever you analyze an algorithm, it should be in terms of three cases. The best case uh, time complexity, average case time complexity, and the worst case time complexity. Best case time complexity is the minimum time required by your algorithm. Average case time complexity is the average time. Worst case time complexity is the maximum time required by your algorithm. So let us understand this analysis with the help of our uh, example. Let us say uh, in this array, I want to search for 10. Okay. I want to set in this array, I want to search for 10. So the key is 10. What will be done now? The key is 10. It will be compared with 10. The match is found in the first comparison itself and the search process stops. Okay. So how many comparisons are done? 
only one comparison. So in best case, if the element is found in the first location itself, then number of comparisons required is one. Therefore, the time complexity in the best case of linear search algorithm is order of one. This is big O notation we are using for representing the time complexities. So when this occurs, best case occurs, if the element we are searching for is the first element in the array itself, okay, then the best case occurs, right? The worst case, now we will understand, we'll try to understand the worst case now. Okay, now look at this example again. Suppose I am looking for uh, this element 40. I want to search for 40. So how many comparisons will be required? You will compare here. It is not found. So you will come over here. You will come over here. You will come over here and so on until you reach 40. So how many comparisons are made? It is n comparisons. The size of your array. n elements are there. 9 elements are there. So you need to perform 9 comparisons to come to 40. Right? So the time complexity of worst case is order of n because it requires n comparisons to reach that element. Or worst case occurs either the element is in the second half or the element is not at all there in the array also. If element is not at all there in the array, then also it requires n comparisons to identify that element is not there, right? And the average case is between the first and last element, anywhere if the element is present, it comes under average case. So we take that average of these elements. This requires two, this requires three, this requires four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So if you take that average of uh, the number of comparisons required, uh, it comes as 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus so on n minus 1 by n minus 2. Uh, it is approximately equal to order of n again. If you represent it in the form of big O notation, it is approximately equal to order of n. Okay. So this is the uh, analysis of uh, linear search algorithm. In best case, it requires order of 1. In average case, it requires order of n. In worst case, it requires order of n. Now, the second uh, algorithm that is available for uh, searching an element in an array is uh, binary search. So the first thing you need to remember uh, about binary search is uh, this is uh, not suitable for unsorted lists. Please remember this point. Binary search cannot be applied if the list is unsorted that means elements in the list is not in a proper order so binary search is applied only if the list is already sorted otherwise binary search cannot be used on the corresponding list right so that is the first rule you need to remember and how it works it it's, it's uh, working is uh, uh, a little similar to uh, a different approach called as a divide and conquer. Divide and conquer approach uh, divides the entire array into subarrays where uh, we focus on one subarray at a time. Okay, so how this actually works? Uh, to understand uh, the general process of binary search, uh, let us go through these steps. Suppose you have an array of uh, n elements and uh, you will find out the middle element. Okay. And then you will compare this x value. That means this is the value we are searching for. x is the value we are searching for. You will compare the value x with the middle element of the array. Right. And then if x matches with the middle element, then index is returned, okay? Because element is found. If x is not matched, then you need to check another condition. 
if x is greater than the middle element what does that mean we know that uh, the array is uh, sorted whatever element appears after middle element they are all greater than middle element only so if x is greater than the middle element then x is supposed to be in the right half only the second half it will never present in the first half because all the elements in the, uh, in the first half before the middle are less than middle only middle element only therefore because x is greater than the middle element x is supposed to be in the right array of right sub array of the array okay Therefore, x lies in the right half subarray after the middle element. So we recur for right half. That means we do the same process. Recur means repeat the same process for right half only. That means again we divide that right half into two parts. We calculate that middle element. We compare that middle element with x, and we again uh, follow the same steps. Okay, I repeat the second step. If x is greater than the middle element, then repeat the process in the right half. That means comparing x and all. In case if x is smaller than the middle element, then we move to first half. Why? Because x is smaller than the middle element, x must present before middle element only. Because the array is sorted. All the elements which are smaller than middle element will exist before middle only. Therefore, we recur in the left half only. So the process will be repeated. What is that process? Comparing x with the middle element and then uh, uh, checking with the right half and left half is done in the left half only. So if you observe this algorithm, the entire array is divided into halves in every step. So first the entire array is divided into two halves and then one of the halves is again divided into two halves and then those one of the halves will be divided into two halves and so on until you either found an element or there are no elements for recurring. Okay, so maybe you know, it's not possible to understand this binary search algorithm at the first look uh, after practicing uh, you will definitely understand this algorithm. There is nothing uh, difficult in it. Okay. Now, look at this uh, detailed implementation of binary search algorithm. Okay, I'm using this binary search name and there are uh, four parameters sent to this binary search algorithm. A is again the name of the array which can consists of uh, uh, the list of elements. This time I'm not sending the size Instead of size, I'm sending the lower bound, that means the lowest index. Probably in C language, it is going to be zero. And uh, upper bound, it's going to be size minus one. Okay, by sending these two, it means you know what is the uh, lowest index and highest index of the array. Okay, how do you calculate the size by using these two values? The size is going to be upper bound minus lower bound plus one. Okay, if there are 10 elements, Upper bound will be 9, lower bound will be 0, 9 minus 0 plus 1 will be the size of the array. Like that also you can calculate. And then uh, key is the value I am searching for. Okay, right. So step 1 says that uh, bz is a variable which is initialized to the lower bound and end is the variable which is initialized to the upper bound. And POS is again initialized to minus one to indicate that element is not found till now. Okay. And step two says that repeat steps three and four until this begin less than or equal to end. So this condition, until this condition is violated, perform step three and four. What are step three and four? Step three is calculate the middle element as beginning index plus ending index by two okay by using this formula we calculate the index of middle element after calculating the index of middle element we compare that value that is a of mid the value at middle element a of mid with key so if it matches if a of mid is equal to key then 
element is found therefore we update the position to mid okay and then we print that position and then say go to step six step six is exit because we found the element there is nothing else we can do with the algorithm so we'll simply go to step six okay in case if this is not found if this a of mid is not equal to key then it comes over here what is it if a of mid is greater than key that means the middle element is greater than key therefore key is present in the left half right middle element is greater than key means key is present in the left half because key is smaller so definitely it could have it, it could have been stored in uh, before middle element right therefore what we do is we update this end to mid minus one that means we bring this end value uh, end position to the index before mid okay mid minus one so the left half is now considered otherwise otherwise means else that is if a of mid is less than key we update this begin value to mid plus one that means we will search in the right half only so this indicates that uh, search for left half this indicates that search for search in the right half okay so we will perform these steps until either the element is found or the element is uh, or the uh, entire array is searched so when you come to step 5 still if position is minus 1 it means that value is not present in the array otherwise it could have been printed the position and uh, the algorithm must have been properly ended right i don't think you understood this algorithm uh, at this level you need to read this again and again until you understand the algorithm or we come back to this algorithm again after looking at this example have a look at this example this uh, an array consisting of uh, say there are nine elements again 1 5 7 8 13 19 20 23 and 29 these are elements and these are indexes the bottom values are indexes these are elements in the array okay and we want to search for 23 initially b is is here at 0 and uh, uh, e and d is at 8 so according to our algorithm what we do repeat steps 3 and 4 while b is less than or equal to n what is b is e? it is 0 what is e and d it is 8 so 0 is definitely less than or equal to 8 therefore what we do middle will be calculated as 0 plus 8 by 2 okay middle is calculated as 0 plus 8 by 2 what is 0 plus 8 by 2 it is 4 okay 4 so we will compare this 13 that is a of mid compare the 13 with the key value we are looking for 23 so what is the relation between these two elements 13 is less than 23 okay that means a of mid is less than the key value a of mid is less than the key value so where it comes a of mid is greater than the key this will occur but this is not true it comes over here what it is saying beginning is updated beginning is equal to mid plus one so beginning is equal to mid plus one what it is saying mid is four so beginning is five initially beginning is at zero now it will come over here at five okay so now the array is from beginning to end that is from five to eight only from here to here only so we are going to search in the second half only right why because the element we are searching is greater than the middle element therefore we search in the second half only once we move into second half remember that we never go back to the first half this is done we never go back to the first half we are going to search within the second half only 
if the element is not found in the second half that's it we say that element is not there but we never go back to the first half okay now let us continue this example again uh, now b is at 5 e and d is at 8 again we perform the same step we calculate middle as 5 plus 8 by 2 13 by 2 uh, 13 by 2 is actually 6.5 we will consider it as 6 okay so this element 20 20 is compared with uh, 23 okay we are looking for 23 so 20 is compared with 20 they are not same and then we establish a relationship 20 is less than 23 again the same relationship so we update begin as mid plus one just like we did in the previous step so what is middle now six six plus one is seven okay and is at the same position eight okay and we repeat the same process again we calculate middle uh, now beginning is at seven end is at eight we calculate middle as seven plus eight by two which is 15 by two 7.5 we consider it as seven right now the last step says that a of middle is 23 and we are looking for 23 a match is found therefore we return the position 7 so this is how it works okay what is done here the array is divided into two parts and then we try to find a solution in either the first half or the second half that is what a divide and conquer method is okay now uh, have a look at another example to understand it properly right this is another example again uh, it consists of 10 elements now 2 5 8 12 16 23 38 56 72 91 now i want to search for 23 so where is b is e? b is e at 0 and uh, e and d is at 9 i'll calculate the middle element 0 plus 9 by 2 which is nothing but 4.5 that means 4 okay middle element is 4 what is it 16 we are looking for 23 and this is 16 so 16 is less than 23 so definitely 23 must have been in the right half so we update that uh, begin to here so that is 5 again we calculate 5 plus 9 by 2 which is nothing but 7 7 at 7 we have 56 56 is greater than 23 therefore this will be updated h will be updated to 7 minus 1 that is over here so l is still here h will come over here now 5 plus 6 by 2 which is 11 11 means 5.5 uh, 5.5 means 5 so middle all middle element is 23 and we are looking for 23 it is found right so that is how you can calculate you can elaborate this you can practice this example take this example on a paper and practice this with the algorithm which we, which we wrote okay and then coming to time complexity how much time is required how many comparisons searching algorithms time complexity is always measured in terms of number of comparisons required okay so let us calculate the time complexity of this binary search algorithm now in best case suppose uh, we look for the element 13 itself let us say in this uh, array i am looking for 13 itself therefore how many comparisons will be required in the first iteration itself i'll find this 13 because it is exactly in the middle right so if you are searching for the middle element in the array then it comes under best case time complexity and it requires how many comparisons only one comparison so if the element we are searching for is exactly at the middle then it means the best case time complexity is big o of one okay and then uh, coming to worst case time complexity you need to understand this properly okay right so if the element we are looking for is not at the middle what we are doing we are dividing the array into 
two halves left half and the right half and then we are moving to either left half or right half okay either left half or right half once you move to left half or right half you will search there only again in the right half if the element is not found again that right half is divided into another half so the total time complexity of the algorithm in the worst case will be calculated as at the beginning it is uh, 1 plus half plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 and so on because every time the array is getting uh, uh, divided into half of the previous size right so uh, in the half array again it is divided into 1 by 4 1 by 4 in 1 by 4 it is again divided into 1 by 8 1 by 8 and so on it is divided so if you evaluate that uh, mathematical series 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 plus so on it will be evaluated to log in i think you know, you know how to evaluate this half plus time complexity of uh, uh, 1 by uh, n plus because n is divided into uh, n elements are divided into n by 2 elements and n by 2 elements at the beginning so the time complexity required is uh, n by 2 at the beginning plus n by 4 plus n by 8 and so on you take out that n the series becomes 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 and so on eventually it will be evaluated as log n okay or else you can view it as a uh, time complexity which is evaluated from the mathematical series half plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 and so on okay uh, when it uh, when uh, we come back to uh, the classes in offline mode I, probably i can show you the derivation of this uh, best case and uh, uh, average case and worst case time complexes of this binary search algorithm also we can derive the algorithms actually time uh, algorithms time complexities actually but uh, at present you just remember that the worst case time complexity is big o of log n and even in the average case also the element may present anywhere in either left half or right half uh, therefore the time complexity of average case is also big o of log n in most of the algorithms average case time complexity and worst case time complexity is going to be same okay so uh, that is about uh, uh, the binary search algorithm and now uh, you need to remember one point over here uh, comparing linear search and binary search which one is actually a better algorithm if you look at the time complexities of linear search algorithm the time complexities are big O of 1 in best case. For binary search also, the best case time complexity is big O of 1. So there is no difference between best case time complexity of linear search as well as binary search. But when it comes to average case and worst case, the time complexity is order of n here. And uh, in binary search, it is order of log n. Which one is bigger, n or log n? n is greater than log n. Therefore, the time complexity of binary search is less compared to linear search. That means, which is efficient algorithm? Efficient algorithm is binary search because it requires only log n time. Log n is less than n. Therefore, binary search is an efficient uh, search algorithm compared with the linear search algorithm. But then uh, there is another point that you need to remember. Binary search is used only when the, search, uh, the list is sorted. It cannot be applied on unsorted list. Whereas uh, linear search can be applied on either sorted list or unsorted list. It does not matter where you apply okay so that is about the linear search and the binary search algorithms okay that's all for today
uh, when we come back uh, we will discuss about another kind of search algorithm which is very complicated fibonacci search algorithm okay with the help of we will try to understand this algorithm with the help of uh, an example in our next class thank you all see you again in our next lecture